Hey guys and welcome back. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. So today is going to be another swatching video. I know, <laughs> so many swatches. But I am swatching the 60 piece Vena Lisa, shut up computer, Vena Lisa um, UV painting gels, but they're coloured gels. They work like gel polish, but I think that you can also do nail art with them. I mean, you can do nail art with normal gel polish. But yeah, there are 60 different colours here. There are uh, this is the packaging. I love the box. I think it's stunning. Um, the 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 gels. I couldn't get my weird out then. The gels come in like this little plastic wrap, and there's two like uh shelves in this box. So there's like one on top, and then there's another. Uh, so you get thirty on top, thirty um thirty underneath. Uh, the box the the pots all come sealed. Uh, I have cut them off already. It actually took me like an hour to get through all of these gel polishes and cut them all off. Oh, it drove me insane. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be swatching all of these onto swatch pops. I do 10 at a time because, yeah. I put my gloves on because there is a lot of gel here and I don't want to get it on my skin. Uh, they cure for 60 seconds. And, yeah. So, um, I am going to put a disclaimer here right now. <clears throat> Sorry, clearing my throat. Um. <clears throat> I'm going to put a disclaimer here. I am doing a true crime story in this video. I thought it would be good whilst we're doing some swatches that we can uh, do a true crime story. Of course, you do not have to watch if you do not want to. This is your disclaimer and your warning now. Um, we are going to be talking um, about the human flesh soap and cake maker. Um, I think they're just known as the human flesh soap maker, but because that's a bit that stands out. Uh, but I added cake in there to let you know that there is um, talk of cannibalism in this video, murder and body dismantlement. Uh, but this case fascinated me, so I really did want to talk about it. So if you don't want to watch, I completely understand. I mean, you can mute the video and watch just the swatching, but it's completely up to you. I will understand you do not have to stay. And uh, also, I no, mean no disrespect uh, to anyone mentioned in this video. Saying that though, this was in the 90, what is it? Uh, 1893 to 1970. So I think most people that were probably involved in this video, in this video, in this story were probably long gone by now. I don't mean any disrespect to that, but yeah, still it's, it's a, story that fascinated me i read about it a while ago and there was just so much detail in it that i had to make sure i had all the notes down and we haven't done a true crime story since uh october halloween wow so i am going to be starting to do more of these i don't think i'll do i don't know how many i'll do we'll see how it goes i might do one a week or i might do like one a fortnight i don't know yet um <clears throat> but yeah we're going to jump right into it and i am going to say now Oh my gosh, some of these words, because it's in Italy, some of these words are really hard for me to pronounce because I am dyslexic. So I do apologise, and if I cannot pronounce the name or the word, <laughs> I will be putting it just on the screen, just so that you guys know what I'm talking about. But anyway, let's get into the story. So today's crew... crew true crime story is the human flesh soap maker um but i will say she's basically a human flesh soap and cake maker tea cakes to be precise um it's an italian uh true crime story so i'm going to butcher a lot of words and names because i am dyslexic i am going to try my hardest but i will be putting the names on the screen just in case um but this is about a woman named Le uh, leon arda arda Ar leon arda uh, Cyaniculi, Cyaniculi. I don't know. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering this. I am butchering it, and I'm sorry. Um, but she was born in Motella, Motelia, uh, Avlino, Avlino. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, in nine, 1893, or oh, 18th of April, 1893. Um, she was. Uh, I. It didn't say much about her childhood, other than when she was a young girl, she attempted to commit suicide twice um but it doesn't give much information it just says that she was where she was born her name where she was born the, the like obviously the, the the area and then it says in 1917 she married a registry office clerk named Raphael Payne Sadra Sadri um who her parents didn't approve of i mean this was the 18 this was 1893 so um her parents didn't approve of the marriage because they already had like a an arranged marriage set up basically and because of this um 
I'm going to call her Leon because I I can't pronounce her full name. Um, she was very superstitious and she believed that her mum, her mother had put a curse on her and her husband. And I, it was like, okay, that's really random. But apparently this woman was very sus suspicious. She was very, like, I think it's like one of them people that were like, uh, well, she goes to fortune tellers and palm readers and, um, you know, like, don't let a black cat, cat walk your path. Don't walk under a ladder. You know, all this, like, stuff like a seven years bad luck if you break a mirror. Basically all that sort of standard stuff. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, in 1917, she did marry her husband, Raphael. And then in 1921, she moved to Loria, Pot and Enza, Potenza, I don't know. Um, and then in 1927, she was actually pr imprisoned for fraud. It doesn't say what for. And obviously, she was imprisoned for fraud, but it doesn't say what she actually done. <laughs> I couldn't find anything on it. So, but she was in prison for fraud anyway. So yeah. So anyway, when she was released, then um, in 1930. So apparently, she only went to prison for three years for this fraud or whatever the hell she done she moved to Lacedonia in Avellino um after their her and her husband's home was actually destroyed by an earthquake um so they up and left and this is where she opened a shop uh obviously they'd settled roots they were happy they were sorted so they were like okay we're gonna stay here and we're gonna be this is going to be our life. And it turns out she was very well respected and very popular with her neighbours and, like, the actual neighbourhood. So, like, everyone knew who she was. Um, and, you know, if she was very popular, I'd assume that she was a very likeable person. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, this, this is shocking of what she does. Uh, so, anyway, uh, the couple done what they'd done. They, they had a shop and... They, they seemed happy and, you know, as normal newlyweds, I guess, newlyweds, because she was in prison for a while. Well, not newlyweds. Uh, she got married in 1917, so they were together for 13 years at this point. <laughs> so we stuck through for thin and, you know, thick and thin. That's great. But um, during uh, her marriage, she actually had 17 pregnancies during the marriage. And she lost three, only three, to... Sorry, I sound... That's... No... I didn't mean it like that. She had 17 pregnancies and during the her marriage she actually lost three children due to ch uh, to miscarriage. Ten of her children then died when they were still small children. But of course it's 1893 and I think a lot of small children, like it was quite common back in them days for children to not survive like to their adulthood. Uh, but she did uh, have four um remaining children uh survived you know four children did survive which is i couldn't imagine losing a child i couldn't imagine having a miscarriage and i couldn't imagine losing a child that i think that's my worst fear because i look at my kids sorry side now i look at my kids every day and i just think like i couldn't imagine a world without them so um, i couldn't imagine what a parent goes through and it really does break my heart um, I've had friends have miscarriages and stuff and I've had friends who actually lost their children due to stillbirth and it's horrible you know it's a oh it's so mortifying but yeah so I maybe that's why she done what she done uh well I assume so uh but anyway she was very protective of these surviving children of course she, she was like you would be after everything um so because she was superstitious she went to like fortune tellers and palm readers and stuff like that um she went to uh one fortune teller and they actually said she would get married uh and she would have children but they would all die wow what a fortune teller you are love thank you so much for that boost of confidence you know i was really <laughs> why <laughs> why would you say that um but anyway <laughs> she sorry i'm not laughing because it's funny i'm laughing because it's just like such a bizarre thing to say to someone um but she did eventually oh my pen clicked again she did eventually visit a palm reader who told her uh and i and this is a quote in your right hand i see prison okay and in your left hand i see a criminal asylum okay so either way bad so this is probably why she was so suspicious. She needed to stop seeing palm readers and fortune tellers. 
Yes. Uh, but anyway, in 1939, her eldest son, Giuseppe, I think I pronounced that one right, uh, joined the Italian army in, pre in preparation for World War II. Because, of course, it's 1939 now. Uh, so, yeah, it would have been World War II. Um, and she was so determined to protect her son. She... But the way she went about it was wrong, okay? So, <laughs> it's not funny. I I'm sorry. It's such a baffling thing. She thought the best way to protect her son was to... It's human sacrifice, basically. Like... Mind blowing. Could you imagine? <laughs> I get that, you know, I'd do anything for my children, but I don't, I don't go that far, you know? Uh, that's a bit woof. But uh, so she decided to keep his son safe um, by committing human sacrifices. All of which were her neighbours, by the way. I keep clicking my pen. Let me put it down. Uh, so uh, she actually got the name. Um, the, what was it? I can't, sorry. Hang on, let me find the name. I did write it down because it was like, Wee. um, she is the soap maker of Cordrico. Cordrico? Cordrego? Ego? Ego? I'm going to put that on the screen. <laughs> um, in between 1939 and 1940, she actually, uh, murdered three women from her uh actual neighborhood which is so sad name uh but basically so it's 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 a rough one her first victim was we're gonna call her seti because uh her first name her, her first name was frostina frostina seti uh she was a lifelong spinster um and leon told her she would help her find a husband a man in polar um apparently uh so she basically what happened was she was like i'll help you find a husband and um you know and you can move there but um she basically persuaded uh letty a uh, seti sorry not letty seti to write letters and postcards to her family um but to but she told Le uh, Seti not to tell any of her family members of what was happening. Like, I find that a bit strange. I'd be straight off. But then again, this was back in the 1893, you know, and, like, you you trusted your community, I guess. Like, and you would have trusted women. I don't think, like, women's serial killers were really a thing back then. So, well, they probably were. I, I don't know. I wasn't there. But, like... You would probably, and this one was popular, so you guess, I guess you would trust it, but then, like, you would, you'd still tell someone. That, that would be my personal opinion. But, yeah, so, uh, Leon decided, persuaded Seti to write letters and postcards to her family about it, but not to tell anyone. Um, but she blamed, like, she said, oh, but don't tell anyone, but, and she blamed it on, like, a superstition. She was like, because you could jinx it, basically. Okay. <laughs> If that's what you say, Leon. Okay. Um, so even though uh, it wasn't a plan to find her a husband, that's what she told her. And the day before Seti uh, was due to leave for Pola, she came into the shop to visit, um, uh, gosh, Leon. I guess it's like a final goodbye, you know, and good luck and all that stuff. Um, but no, no, uh, Seti would not leave that shop ever again basically so well she would but oh god i can't even make a joke um i can't even make a joke about it because it's so it's so horrific uh basically what leon done was she toasted with her i guess uh gave her a glass of wine and she put drugs in the glass of wine and when seti had like gone unconscious Leon then decided to kill her with an axe. She then dragged the body into a closet and cut her into nine parts. Yeah. Gathering all the blood into a basin. Um, she described in a quote of what happened next. And I'm going to get it. It's horrific. And the quote was, I threw the pieces into a pot, added several kilos of caustic soda, which I had bought 
to make soap and stirred the mixture in until pieces dissolved in a thick dark mush that I poured into several buckets and emptied the nearby septic tank. As for the blood in the basin, I waited until it had clodger it. Oh God, I can't even say this word. <laughs> Codg yeah, I'm going to put it on the screen. I can't say that word. Dried it in the oven, grounded it and mixed it with flour, sugar, chocolate, milk, eggs, as well as a bit of margarine. <laughs> Kneading all the ingredients together, I made a lot of crunchy tea cakes and served them to the ladies who've come to visit, though Giuseppe and I also ate them. What are you doing with your life? She's feeding... <sighs> Basically black pudding tea cakes. Human black pudding tea cakes. Oh my god. That's mortifying. Where's her husband? It doesn't even say anything about her husband. I'm assuming her husband must have passed away. But it doesn't really say anything. But she fed his son... And they sell those kids. So they really couldn't have been that bad. And the women ate them. So like. Uh, Clodgerated. It basically is with the blood clog. Clo clo clots I think. I cannot, I cannot say that weird. But. So she also had the audacity. To. <laughs> receive Seti's life savings. Which was three. No 30,000 lire. Lire. As a payment for his service. Oh, here's 30 la, la, I don't even know what that is. I'm going to have to configure that into pounds. Um, But yeah, hey, you know you're going to drug me, kill me, chop me up into itty bitty pieces and then serve me to your friends. Yeah, here's the money for that. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with people? But anyway, <clears throat> so she done that and then... Apparently, that wasn't enough, so she decided to protect her son with another human sacrifice. And the second was a woman named Francesca. Um, she claimed that she had found a job for her at a school for girls in Pasesid. Oh gosh, why did I pick such a hard one? <laughs> but like Seti, she uh, persuaded... Francesca, Francesca to write postcards and letters to be sent to her friends but this time uh, in Corrigio detailing her plans uh, also like Seti uh, she came to visit uh, Leon before she left to go to a new job you know I mean like she, she thought she was going to be a school teacher so you know but again why wouldn't you tell anyone anyway she done the same thing she drugged this woman as well um, with wine she then killed it with an axe and uh, she oh she done the same thing and she also charged her as well the same amount of money why is she <laughs> I, I, I get it but like oh my gosh you haven't taken enough from these poor women mind you they're not gonna need it I guess but it's still not the point like you've literally <sighs> wow so um that was on the she it doesn't say when she um actually murdered uh Seti, but Francesca uh that was on the fifth of September nineteen forty, and then just twenty five days later she decided to take her third victim, which was a woman named uh Virginia. Yeah, Virginia. I'm saying that right. Sorry, I'm just checking. Uh she was a former soprano soprano and she um Leon told her, Oh, you know, I've found you a job um as a secretary for uh a man in Florence. So this woman was like, Yeah, sure, I'll have that job. I mean, you know, it's not a singing career, but it's a job. Uh so yeah, she done exactly the same thing with this third woman. She told her to write the letters and the postcards, don't tell anyone where you're going. And on the thirtieth of September nineteen forty, again Virginia came in and she seen Leon before she left and she done the same thing to this woman. I can't believe oh gosh. But this woman, however, unlike the first two victims, she was melted into she was melted into soap, guys. 
That woman, if this is the quote, she ended up in the pot like the other two. Her flesh was fat and white. When it had melted, I added a bottle of cologne and after a long time on the boil, I was able to make some acceptable creamy soap. Okay. I have, I gave bars to my neighbours and acquaintances. The cakes too were better. That woman was really sweet. Oh g gosh, why? But this woman, she was very sweet and made into soap. This woman was also charged 50 lira or whatever it's, however it's pronounced. <laughs> she also took, this is what it says on here. It's allegedly the, this is, I don't know if it's true, but apparently she took all of the victims, like the three women's shoes and clothes and uh, public bonds and jewellery and she sold them all. Um, I, I don't know how true that is. It also says that the payments were alleged, but like, I mean, there was payments for every single one, so I don't know. Uh, but anyway... Luckily for Virgin uh, Virginia, she actually had a superstitious sister who suddenly noticed that his sister had gone missing. I mean, of course she would. I like surely, surely the other two victims' families would have been like, "What's going on?" I know that they sent like they had like letters, and Leon was probably sending them out to cover her tracks. But like, why wasn't everyone's like <laughs> Virginia's sister was like? Yeah, something's not right here. Like, if that was me, I'd notice my sister missing. I'd notice any family member of mine missing. So how... Oh, gosh, there were different times back in the 18th century, weren't they? <sighs> well, anyway, his sister did, um... You know, did... Found it suspicious that his sister was missing and she hadn't heard of her. So, uh, she... And she recalls the last time she actually seen his sister was going into Leon's house. Thank God. So, we, we have a last scene... Thank gosh. So, of course, being the normal human being that she was, she went to the police and she reported it instantly. And, of course, that is where they opened up an investigation. Um, but the... Uh, Leon was arrested. I th ah, let me find the date. When was she arrested? It doesn't say when she was arrested, but she was arrested... No, sorry, she was tried for murder in 1946 but it doesn't say the date for some odd reason um but basically what happened was um so they, they the police opened up an investigation and they were looking in to leon and leon was of course denying it denying the crime oh i didn't do anything you know they i got this woman a husband this woman a job and this woman a job you know they're all doing their own thing and here there and everywhere um <clears throat> so she wasn't going to budge and then the police started pointing the finger at his son, Giuseppe. And that was when she was like, nah, <laughs> it was me. I, 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 I'm I, sorry. You know, and she, she confessed. And I mean, yeah. Uh, shouldn't have done it in the first place. And then none of this would have happened. Your son would have been, wouldn't have nearly been tried for murder. But I'm glad she did, you know, save your son's skin. Could you imagine she bloody didn't? So, of course, she was arrested and she was uh, sent to prison. Um, and her trial was in Rego, uh, Emily, um, that on the last week of her trial, she gripped the witness stand rail and oddly, uh, with like an oddly, like it says, this is what it says. I'm sorry. With an oddly delicate hand and calmly set the prosecutor right on certain details. So basically she was correcting him. She was proud of her work. I don't know why. Her deep set dark eyes gleamed with a wild inner pride as she concluded. I gave the copper lady. No, I gave the copper ladle. Not lady, sorry. Which I used to skim the fat off the kettles to my country. Which was so badly in need of meth metal during the last days of the war um she was of course found guilty and sentenced to 30 years in a prison and get this three years in a <laughs> in a criminal asylum so that palm reader was right basically um how about them apples <laughs> could you imagine like literally that's what she was told by that palm reader wow that's that's shocking uh, right why am i more shocked about the palm reader than the actual crime no, it's horrific. It's horrible. I couldn't imagine... Oh, gosh. 
Do you imagine though, like your neighbour, you'd think this woman was all nice and sweet and then it turns out that she was actually making cakes and soap out of your other neighbours. <sighs> wow. Um, but anyway, she was found guilty, like I said. And then uh, she passed away on the 15th of October in 1970. Um, she was saving her last few, like... She died in this criminal asylum. So literally, she must have died in the last three years of his sentence. So it was lucky. Well, yeah, I guess. No, I'm going to say it. It was lucky she passed away before she was let out. Because she probably would have killed someone else and stuffed them in a cake. Oh, gosh. But anyway, she... Uh, this is the this is the most baffling part. Um, the pot that the victims were boiled in and some of the other artefacts, they're actually on display in the Criminology Museum in Rome. So you can actually go to Rome, a museum in Rome, and you can see what she cooked. Oh my gosh. That's... No. No, no. We don't need to see that. Let's not. <laughs> um, But yeah, that is the story of the... Uh, I think they actually co they called her. <laughs> Let me find the actual name. I can't remember it off the top of my head because it's in it's it's an Italian name. I'm gonna butcher it anyway. So they named her. <laughs> Let me find it. The soap maker of Cor Correggio. So yeah, soap maker of Correggio. Wow. What a name to look up to. I wonder what his son must have done. It says nothing about his son. <sighs> you know, I can't... I, he, obviously, she's probably got, like... Like, extended family now, you know. He has, he, his, his son would have had children and stuff, I'm hoping. But could you imagine? That's so... That's so bizarre. Like, you were that suspicious and worried and protective of your own children that you killed people... And served them up in tea cakes and soap bars to protect your children. I, I guess that if you're a super superstitious person anyway, like I'm not condoning what she done, it was wrong. But if you were a superstitious person and then you lost all, those, all your children, like 13 children, that's a lot. You know, I think it would make someone go a little bit, I think it would make someone go a little bit insane. You know, so... Yeah, that's so sad and I feel so sorry for the victims and their families. Like, even though most of them probably aren't here anymore, it's still not the point. It's a horrible thing to... Uh, this It just baffled me, this story. I had to tell it. But anyway, guys, that is the end of the video. Well, the end of the true crime story. We're going to be ending the video in like a minute. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. That feels like such a bad thing to say on the end of a true crime story. Um, I hope you're all staying safe though. <laughs> and don't forget to keep on smiling. I laughed in this, not because I found it funny, but because it was like, it, it baffled me. You know, when you're like so confused that you laugh, that's why like some of the stuff, it, it was just shocking. If you don't laugh, you'll cry, right? Um, but yeah, I just, I hope everyone eats their dinner tonight without problem. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to go, but I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>